We have Rosie over here. Where are you from, Rosie? El Monte. El Monte, all right. And uh, Yolanda? From Los Angeles. From Los Angeles. All right, right now I'd like you to take a look at some of the wonderful prizes that uh, the folks will be winning in the Ops and Pops Dance Contest. We'll be judging that Ops and Pops Dance Contest. 25% uh, on originality uh, in steps, uh, in choreography, 25% uh, on uh, natural dancing ability, and 50% on what they wear in their uh, Ops and Pops clothing outfit. And then, of course, we have a wonderful Ops and Pops dance record that they'll be dancing to a little bit later on. Right now, though, let's find out what they're going to win. The weekly winners in Shebang's Ops and Pops Dance Contest will receive a supply of the great new Papermate Ops and Pops ballpoint pens that have uh, become the world's biggest writing craze ever. And match your wildest clothes creations with a Papermate Ops and Pops pen. Of course, they are available just everywhere. And now, the winners of Shebang's Ops and Pops Dance Contest in three weeks will receive for the girl this beautiful, exciting radio quarter. You know, plain radios are out, radio recorders are in, and this new combo gives you radio, easy push button type, tape recording from its own radio and playback. Radio quarter available wherever radios and records are sold. Plus, both the girl and the boy winner each receives this great his and hers Honda. It's all happening at your Honda dealers. Go in and see all the 20 sharp precision built Hondas. Take a free ride, you just got to, because it's the scene machine, it's a Honda. And for the boy winner from Vox, the sound of success is Vox. You'll have this solid body super meteor guitar and Pathfinder amplifier. Vox is what's happening with such famous names as the Monkees and over a hundred other top groups around the world. Vox, great equipment. Now, I have a, a bit, so many things I have to mention. Shebang will be on tomorrow night, for instance. The Motown special will be repeated at 8 o'clock tomorrow night right here in color. If you missed it, I hope you'll tune us in because that's our brand new time starting tomorrow, 8 o'clock every Sunday for Shebang. Uh, next week, we'll be having, a week from tomorrow, the Four Seasons as we salute that fine group that has had over a dozen hit single records and a half a dozen albums. Right now, uh, let's introduce a fellow who's from a radio station where I work, KRLA, to tell us about the pop festival, Dick Moreland. Dick. Well, Dick Moreland, I'm sure you all know, Dick is on KRLA on the weekends, and of course he's the program director, and he and a whole crew of guys went up there. What happened up there? Well, I uh, went dressed rather conservative, with something like this, <laughs> and a change of beads, and uh, frankly, I'm glad I didn't wear a suit up there, because I think they probably would have arrested me for being a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was casual. It was most casual affair, and very colorful in the clothing. Most of the people from the San Francisco area went in serapis and uh, all types of colorful clothing and uh, the hair was long and lots of flowers in it and it looked beautiful. You know how wonderful that the theme of something like this is L-O-V-E, no kidding. And to prove that there was a lot of love up there, there were no incidents, were there? Uh, none that we could find anywhere. As a matter of fact, a lot of that uh, was caused because the police didn't look for incidents. They uh, really just kind of casually went along with it. Motorcycle policemen had bouquets of flowers on their, on their motorcycles and uh, the chief of police was running around in the typical German helmet thing with the uh, you know, uh, I think we're getting. Oh, I thought maybe we were getting a shot. There, we're getting a shot. What do we have there, Dick? Uh, that's, Is that, uh, that that's one of the Peter. Monkeys? That's Peter Tork standing in the middle there. Uh -huh. Peter was up along with Mickey Dolan's the concert, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the next shot is of me and you. Uh, we didn't make the concert together, but... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chance to go because I had to work Sunday. Uh, everybody else came back just raving about the animals and some other acts. Well, there was a lot of showstoppers. Jefferson Airplane, for instance, did it one evening, and uh, immediately following that, about 15 minutes later, Otis Redding almost tore the walls down. That's right here. Um, the Bloomfield thing, Paul Bloomfield, it's new blues band is put together, and that's really... More than anything else, what do you think this has done for popular music, Dick? Well, I think it's uh, done a lot more for the kids than even popular music because they conduct themselves in that city beautifully and it's not prepared for that many people. For instance, Saturday night alone, the auditorium is supposed to hold 7,000 people. There were 8,500 paid admissions in there and about 500 press, which makes it pretty tight and crowded. And the fairgrounds had 35,000 people at the same time. Now, all these people were staying in and around Monterey, a lot of them over at the uh, college uh, uh, football field and they just stayed out all night and groups like the Jefferson Airplane and uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience and those went over all night and played How did Gypsy them. Boots go over? Well, Gypsy did his, his usual number and he was everywhere. Right. He insisted that he... Spreading uh, flower power. Spreading flower power and uh, he finally convinced them that he had to go on the main stage and he made it up there You're the kidding. last day. <laughs> he would too. Oh, what a publicity. Dick Moreland, thank you very much for My telling point. us about the Monterey Pop Festival. <laughs> hey, Dick Moreland. That's good.
Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful that all those people can get together and just have one great time. Here